I'm Professor Darius, and you're watching African Elements. Internal colonialism is a social theory that describes the practice of colonizing an area within U.S. borders. Some have argued that the internal colony is an outdated theory that doesn't adequately explain the facts of contemporary black life. In this video, I'll explore the model of internal colonization and its usefulness in understanding the social condition of black people. All that, coming up next. Thank you for watching African Elements. If you're already a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to this channel, we take Black and Africana Studies educational content from the walls of higher education and bring it right here where the people are at. In this episode, we explore the internal colony theory. Harold Cruz coined the term internal colonialism in 1961. The theory emphasizes the lines between neighboring regions that are clearly different in culture, economy, politics, and most importantly, access to resources. The model also describes how the United States exploits black citizens through economic policies and practices that benefit mainly whites. Similar to the concept of colonization, the colonizing group exercises control over an oppressed colonized group. In the age of colonization, European powers held colonial territories and directly controlled them as a ruling party. During the colonial period, African Americans who saw themselves as part of a global struggle against colonialism largely adopted the theory of the internal colony. Whereas the external colony is a territory directly controlled by another state, internal colonies are regions within a country. In both cases, the colonized or oppressed population enjoys less access to resources and their exploitation lays the foundation of colonial wealth and power. Although not wholly agreeing with the internal colonization model, author and professor Kianga Yamada-Taylor notes the similarities. The profits reaped from the exploitation of black urban dwellers were not insignificant, but neither were they the important revenue streams back to the American metropole. The outflow of capital from the inner city worked almost exclusively to the benefit of the layer of business owners directly involved in economically exploitative relationships with the urban ghetto, such as bankers and real estate agents. The outflow of capital generally benefits business interests as opposed to the government. As a result, sociologists who subscribe to the internal colony theory often couple the model with a critique of capitalism. Nevertheless, due to socially imposed government policies, internal colonies are spaces where people of color are more like colonial subjects than citizens of their own countries. They're often located within metropolitan areas, but are not part of them. They are places that have been colonized and are under the control of a dominant power. For that reason, black power advocates in the 1960s and 70s largely embraced the internal colony model. Stokely Carmichael popularized the concept of internal colonialism along with members of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC, during the late 1960s. In his book, Black Power, The Politics of Liberation in America, Stokely Carmichael argues that Black people in this country form a colony, and it is not in the interest of the colonial power to liberate them. Black people are legal citizens of the United States, with, for the most part, the same legal rights as other citizens, yet they stand as colonial subjects in relation to white society. To break the bonds of colonization, black power advocates sought liberation through self-determination, autonomy, and the power to govern themselves. In his book, Dark Ghetto, Dilemmas of Social Power, Kenneth Clark describes the dark ghetto as the space where colonies consisting specifically of black people and people of color are created and maintained. Ghettoization is a product of social policies such as housing and policing, which are at the heart of the creation and maintenance of the internal colony. In the wake of nationwide uprisings between 1965 and 1967, President Johnson formed the Kerner Commission to determine the root cause of the unrest. Their findings support the notion that the urban ghetto is a societal creation. This is our basic conclusion. Our nation is moving toward two societies, one black, one white, separate and unequal. Segregation and poverty have created a destructive environment totally unknown to most white Americans. What white Americans have never fully understood, but what the Negro can never forget, is that white society is deeply implicated in the ghetto. 
White institutions created it, white institutions maintain it, and white society condones it. Social and economic conditions in riot cities constituted a clear pattern of severe disadvantage for Negroes compared with whites. The dark ghettos and visible walls have been erected by white society and by those who have power, both to confine those who have no power and to perpetuate their own powerlessness. The dark ghettos are social, political, educational, and above all, economic colonies. The fact that most residents are poor and lack access to education or jobs reinforces their isolation. In addition, the internal colony model views the police as occupying forces rather than protectors of law and order. The dark ghettos are places where the police are constantly present. Patrolling the streets in search of crime, the police create an atmosphere of fear and intimidation. Police maintain the racial hierarchy controlling the movement of blacks within the ghetto by reinforcing the separation between the black community and the rest of society. Above all, the police ensure that the black community does not challenge the system. To some Negroes, the police have come to symbolize white power, white racism, and white repression. And the fact is that many police do reflect and express these white attitudes. The atmosphere of hostility and cynicism is reinforced by a widespread belief among Negroes in the existence of police brutality and in a double standard of justice and protection, one for Negroes and one for whites. A deep hostility between the police and ghetto was a primary cause of the riots. Although the over-policing and incarceration of communities of color is ostensibly a measure to curtail crime in these communities, research suggests that the far-reaching impacts may exacerbate crime rates. The siphoning off of human and monetary resources from black communities causes stress among families impacted by mass incarceration. As a result, there is a tipping point after which the number of people in prison is too high so that crime is furthered rather than prevented by incarceration. While it may seem counterintuitive, the tipping point is the result of the shift in population from the largely urban to largely rural regions in which the prisons are located. The U.S. Bureau of the Census redefines prisoners from poor urban minority communities as living in the region in which they are imprisoned, which is usually far from their homes. The law then transfers funds from the prisoner's home community to the community in which the prison resides, thereby taking much-needed funds from home communities while the prisoner is locked away and unable to contribute to his or her family. So, while arguably doing little to diminish crime, there's little question that the over-policing of black communities is one of the social measures that maintain the internal colony. What are your thoughts on the internal colony? Is it still useful as a model for understanding black America? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Professor Darius, and if you're still watching, maybe consider joining the History Makers in our Patreon community who make it possible for me to continue to make this content. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to become a History Maker, you can join them for as little as a dollar a month and gain early access to ad-free videos. Or you can support us for free just by leaving a like, dropping a comment below, and subscribing. Either way, thank you for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the comments.